Well, before the power plant was there, I mean, all you heard was the natural, the natural sounds out there. Now, especially at night, you walk out, walk out on my deck, and you hear this big, immense, some kind of machine running, and it's, it's the power plant. Well, my name's Kim Brock. Um, this is my wife, Susan. Uh, I've lived here uh, in my place out there in uh, at 79 Woodland Way. It's been my home since 1974. When we moved here from Macon, they were in the process of acquiring the land and building the power plant. And there was a, a lot of different opposition and a lot of propaganda about what this power plant was going to do. And none of it was true. The taxes they pay Monroe County have been a, a boon for the county. You know, we've now got some of the best school systems in the state, and it's, it's a, a large part of it. So in many aspects, they've been very good for this county. They've just dropped the ball on this one issue. The base of that ash is in contact with the groundwater aquifer. They've got monitoring wells. Georgia Power has monitoring wells around this thing that show groundwater contamination. There have been geologists, been actually two geologists that have done reports on it and sent that to the Southern Environmental Law Center saying that this is a bad idea. Now, pretty much when I started drinking bottled water back before my first wife died, probably about 10 years ago, partially because to me something had changed in the water. It, didn't taste the same, it didn't feel the same in your mouth, um, it gets cloudy from time to time. I've had my water tested, like I said, with the county extension office several times, and it's always come back, oh, it's clean. Back in the end of August, a friend of mine called me, he said, uh, there's a group called Altamaha Riverkeeper, they're testing people's wells here, and they're testing for a variety of uh, contaminants known to exist in coal ash. I'm like, yes, I'm very interested. August 29th, Fletcher Sams and uh, several other people showed up, tested my well, and about five weeks later, um, he called me and he said, uh, your well is contaminated. You got hexavalent chromium at 3.2 parts per billion, which is 160 times California's safe standards and 46 times the North Carolina safety standard. Thank God I've not been drinking it for quite some time. I hear it's not skin permeable. Well, the stuff's not skin permeable. It's more of an ingestion hazard or an in inhalation hazard. Well, when you're in the shower, you've got water mist in the air and steam. How hazardous is that? You gotta take a bath. I've seen some rumblings and stuff that, oh, this is a naturally occurring element in the ground here, and I think that's pure BS. Because they've tested several wells on the other side, the Jones County side of the Oak Muggy River, and all of them have tested clean so far. There's another thing right there that tells you that this is not a naturally occurring element in our soil. If it was, it, you would find dirty wells over there, and they've found none so far. There are two bills, House Bill uh, 756 and Senate Bill 297 that are dealing with this. And we're trying to get legislation passed to put this in place and that will require them to put it in a mine facility. We're trying to get them to treat this stuff with at least the care that they treat household garbage. Banana peels and coffee grounds are are treated with more care than this coal ash. You could not get a permit to put a household land, household garbage landfill, even in a lined facility. You could not get a permit to put one of those there where that ash pond is at. And over on Lake Sinclair's plant branch was a coal-fired power plant that has been shut down, and that was done primarily through public pressure. This is my life's mission right now. 
is to get something done about this. There's a lot of people that want them to pay f to bring county water out here. That would be good. Um, first and foremost, do the right thing and clean this mess up.